So I don't know about wisdom, but I'm going to attempt to impart a few uh, lessons from what I think now can almost be called history. Uh, I did have uh, some sense of deja vu about this uh, discussion. It reminded me of uh, a policy forum I wrote in uh, 1995 entitled A Time to Sequence. The context here, of course, was quite different, uh, but the message the same. Uh, we had been through a period of intense technology development and uh, uh, mapping, uh, and what we had was not perfect, but it was pretty good. And I made the case here that it kind of was time to sequence, and I, I think I got the timing about right. Mm -hmm. This was necessary to make a major shift of resources, of focus, and so forth. And that seems to be the overwhelming uh, impression that I've gotten. Uh, there's a kind of consensus that it's a time to sequence. Uh, I also had here just a somewhat uh, humorous way that I started this uh, article uh, reminiscing on how uh, eight years uh, before my, my uh, views toward the Human Genome Project had first uh, appeared in science in, in the form of this one one word quote. Uh, in retrospect, uh, the Human Genome Project was a big project, but it actually wasn't huge. Uh, what we're talking about here, uh, at least as I would like to define it, is huge and uh, is going to uh, require uh, learning all of the lessons of the HGP and, and many others and is going to involve the collective effort of a, an enormous number of people with highly diverse skills. Uh, from time to time, I'm asked to give talks about the sort of the right and the wrong lessons from the Human Genome Project. Uh, uh, this slide captures just a, a few of what I regard as the right lessons. Uh, some other day, I'll discuss the wrong lessons, which are the most commonly cited ones. I think a key point is that p policy making should really focus on goals and not detailed means. And uh, I think that as we move on from this workshop, we really have to try to crispen uh, our ideas about what we're trying to accomplish. Uh, the questions of how to accomplish them are uh, going to have to be worked out in pilot projects and going forward. Uh, so my herding cats uh, point is that uh, at its best, the, the Human Genome Project was a kind of cat herding operation, and I think that's very much the way that this kind of endeavor uh, should go. And the point here is that there has to be a certain amount of organization, but not too much. Uh, I think the Human Genome Project always got in trouble when it was uh, too tightly organized, too tightly managed from the top down. Uh, but of course, complete chaos doesn't work either uh, if you actually have goals. Uh, I won't belabor the third point, uh, but uh, one thing I learned, I've learned in the HGP is to sort of beware of predictions of IT crises uh, because they actually tend to solve themselves. And I think they solve themselves because we're bit players in the IT world. Uh, streaming high-definition video into every home in prime time uh, is a problem so mind-bogglingly bigger uh, than the ones that we're discussing that, uh, and, and has such strong uh, consumer demand behind it that we, we will continue to be able to piggyback uh, on uh, the, that uh, technological sector. And I was pleased to see that, uh, that Daniel and Nancy are two main commentators on this subject, really. I, I heard them saying more or less the same thing. Uh, one area in which sort of top-down activity is absolutely essential is, is in quality control, interlaboratory data standards, and so forth. And it's not a problem that you can solve uh, in one go. You need a, a system, a process. Uh, We've heard, for example, quite a lot about the ENCODE uh, project, not, not directly, but it's uh, hovering around our activities. And uh, having just watched it, I was not a participant. Uh, I, I think, really, its greatest success is that it took a bunch of functional genomic kinds of assays that scored very poorly uh, when it, the project started on these kind of criteria and, and really uh, developed 
uh, strong interlaboratory standards, you could actually recapitulate much of the ENCODE data now today uh, relatively easily and with much less expense, mostly because uh, we know how to do it now. So let me focus a little on uh, goals rather than means because I, I do think that that's what we really need is some kind of, I, I don't think we perhaps have a strong consensus about goals here, but that's where I think we need to focus the discussion. Uh, my own view is that what we really need is a long-term big picture plan uh, to do what I call modernizing the discovery model that guides my medical research. So this is a rather grandiose kind of uh, goal, uh, but notice a couple of things about it is the emphasis on modernization I think is going to be critical in this period of, uh, of tight resources where we're going to have to be doing this. I, I think that we just need to learn to think about this project and to sell this project not as a big new add-on initiative, but it's a modernization of activities that the NIH is already very heavily involved in, and we gradually have to start doing them somewhat differently. And many of the bullet points, like the ones Eric's just showed, uh, you know, indicate a lot of different ways in which this enterprise needs to be modernized. Uh, but the other point is that uh, we're really talking about a sort of discovery model that applies to much of what the NIH does, at least in its basic and translational research. And uh, that's a different way of formulating the goal. It's not as easy to sell as, uh, as, uh, as that we're going to have a major decade-long initiative about a particular disease or whatever, but I think it's what we need to do uh, and that the risks are high that uh, we'll be distracted by sort of more parochial goals. Uh, there's not time uh, now to really talk about uh, how this modernization of the discovery model might uh, occur, uh, but I, I would like to uh, uh, refer people uh, interested in, in this subject to a recent National Research Council report called Toward Precision Medicine. It was issued uh, last fall. I served on this committee. It was chaired by Charles Sawyers and uh, Sue Desmond Hellman, two prominent cancer researchers. And th this report made a, a major effort to lay out uh, the, a game plan, a long-term game plan for modernizing the discovery model of biomedical research and to move toward uh, what is referred to here as precision medicine. Just as a brief aside, uh, the committee, uh, these w words turn out to be important. And uh, the committee uh, self-consciously chose this, this term over personalized. Um, Harold Varmus actually had the nicest comment on that that I've heard in which uh, he, he captured, I think, exactly what the committee was thinking. Uh, he said his father was a GP, and he said, you know, my father practiced personalized medicine. He knew his patients' names. He visited them in their homes. What he couldn't practice was precision medicine. He could not tailor the treatments that he had available uh, to particular sort of biological aspects of those individuals. We want to do that with more precision. We get too caught up in the whole personalized idea, and it, it does lead away from evidence-based medicine. From It leads back toward anecdote, and we're seeing a lot of that right now, and I, I see it as actually a major risk in the, say, decade or so ahead. Uh, this report is full of diagrams of this general sort, and you'll, you'll notice their similarity uh, to, uh, to, to many that were shown in this, uh, in this meeting with the Information Commons, the Knowledge Network, uh, uh, and uh, many things uh, filtering into this or feeding into this, and uh, various sort of virtuous cycles that one would like to set up. Uh, we've covered a lot of this ground. Uh, at, the, at the core of the committee's recommendation uh, is uh, a shift towards more emphasis on the study of patients that are embedded uh, in the ordinary course of health care. Uh, there is going to be tension, and uh, I think uh, Patricia did a particularly nice job just a couple of talks ago, and of capturing some of these tensions, uh, it's going to take time, you know, to really launch an endeavor that is modernizing this discovery model, and uh, other things are going to go on at the same time. But I think that 10 to 20 years from now, uh, the standard discovery model in biomedical research will be largely focused uh, at the discovery stage, 
on large patient populations that are embedded in the ordinary course of healthcare, and that these various mechanisms that we've discussed of then pulling people out of those environments for more specialized purposes will, will be the, the main follow-up mechanism.